Hey, caregivers, welcome to another amazing episode of the Caregiver and Entrepreneurship Reimagined podcast. Guys, we have the best guests today on the, on the podcast because this girl is amazing. I consider her one of my first coaches um, being in the business, and it's truly an honor to have her on the podcast today. So, and her name's Ashley Rachel. Ashley, thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank you, Melissa. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited. So Ashley and I, um, gosh, when did we meet, girl? Was it back in 2020 or was it not till 2021? Sometime around then. It was years ago. Yeah, it was years ago. We'll just leave it that. Years ago. And this girl has been um, in my back pocket for years as just an inspiration with storytelling because as a caregiver, we have our unique story. Um, but if you're a business owner, like we are, you definitely have a unique story. And sometimes it can feel so overwhelming hearing all the things on social media and everything about another gurus in the business about what you should do and what you should say. And I love how Ashley has just inspired me. It's just like, just say it like it is. It doesn't have to be super crazy. And like, one thing I want to say right away to your face that really helped me the other day is, um, I watched, actually watched an Instagram story of yours and you were talking about how just keep it simple and don't throw everything at them. What's one simple shift you want them to do? And I was like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it just made a lot more sense because I think sometimes we complicate things way so much more than what it needs to be. Yeah, it's so true. When I first started creating content online, which was, I think, like really late 2018, I started a blog. I, I actually started as a self-love blogger. And I didn't even know what I was going to grow a coaching business. I just wanted to write and maybe make some money from it, maybe help some people. And when I first started, I really thought that in order to make an impact, like you just had to give so much away. And I thought your writing would have to be so professional. And I tried so hard and it wasn't really authentic to me. And over time, that's been a really big part of my journey is just realizing like, content gets to be simple. And often what comes so natural for you does not come natural to your ideal clients. So like, don't feel like you have to write huge, long, crazy posts and include all kinds of tips in them or have some huge story. Sometimes the most simple thing that you say is life-changing for somebody else. Absolutely. I like that. And it's so funny. I got, I was just sitting here on my computer before we started recording this episode. And I just got the idea of like, why do I, what's three things or a couple things of that I could share of why I love what I do. And I started writing that on my phone um, before this call. And it just really comes down to just simple things of like, okay, I love that I get to work from home and be with my family. I love that I get to um, just encourage work and work, encourage and work with so many people all across the U S even around the world, even and that mind boggles me and how um, how what I do is still important because thinking back to the pandemic, I thought about how we were forced to isolate and separate and we had to look for different alternatives to interact. And even though the pandemic has quieted down to where it's manageable, where we can do in person again, which is lovely. And we need that as human beings, we're creatures of need to be with other people. For some people though, in some situations though, it's still not safe to do so. If you're dealing with a caregiver, if you're caregiving for someone that has a compromised immune system like cancer or something else that, that their system is very sensitive, a germ could like, you know, really set them off into a spiral. Maybe it's dealing with someone like my husband who has a neurological disorder where he's stabilized now, but still for safety, he needs to be close to adults that can triage him and make sure he's safe and gets the help he needs if he has an attack. Or maybe it's a grandparent or a parent with dementia. You know, they need to be safe because they don't know where they're at half the time. Or maybe it's um, someone with mobility issues due to like an illness, you know, an accident or a result of an accident or a stroke or an illness that they have paralysis or they have an amputation. So um, I really think it's important for those who are caregiver entrepreneurs who are also listening to this um, uh, episode to realize that it's so important that you do not be quiet about what you have to share because people still need that. You know, even though we are back to in-person, there's still a good amount of the population that has to, out of safety, out of necessity of what they have going on in their personal life, to tweak it and still do the remote type of work that like what Ashley and I, are, that Ashley and I do with our coaching businesses that we're so passionate about. Yeah, I love that. 
Um, I, I have so much respect for people who do caregiving because I know that, that, that just cannot be easy. My dad, he lives with my grandparents who are both 90. And I know that that's a lot on him and it's a lot, it's just a lot of work. And I have a baby, I'm a new mom. She's uh, eight months old and it's a lot, even just being a mom. So, um, it's a lot to manage, but it, I'm really grateful that we have the internet where we can share our story. We can share our gifts. We can share the things that we're learning and help other people and also get to be home and be with the people that we love and take care of the people that we love. And it's like, it's such a blessing that, that we get to do that. Right. And I think that's important. Now I want to say, wait, I'm just going to say this too for caregivers because just in my brain, I want to share it. Um, you're, you have a lot more than the average person because like Ashley and I are both moms. Mar managing your relationship um, with your partner, whether you're married, however you do it, that's stressful and important and takes work and time um, and energy. Being a mother, whatever age your children are. I mean, Ashley's just starting. She has a nine, she has a, what you said, a nine month old. Um, I have a four, eight, eight months. It's okay, yeah. so she has an eight month old. Y'all, I have a four and a half year old who's in junior kindergarten. And yeah, it's a different, there's different challenges there. We just got through toilet training. Yay. Woo. So, woo. you know, there's all those. So, so that takes more time, energy and work. And then when you add on the component component of either running a business or also caring for someone like um, I, I sympathize with your dad, Ashley, because my first caregiving role was for my grandmother. I took care of her the last two years of her life and she passed away in her latter nineties. So for sure, that is a lot. And I moved and I did the same thing. I moved in with her because at the time it made more sense. I was medically trained. There was not a lot of other members of the family that really had the capacity to take on something like that, which I totally respected life. You know, we all have different seasons of where we're able to help or not help. And that's fine. We need to have those boundaries. So yeah, it's a lot. When you think about the layers of responsibility, that can be overwhelming. But I think Ashley what can we share with our listeners, maybe three simple tips or shifts to help them cope with that? Because it can, you, you, it can be really paralyzing, right? To think, I have yeah. all these responsibilities. I'm being pulled four different directions, three or four, two, maybe two or two to four. And mm -hmm. it can feel really hard to budget out. How do I budget out my time? How do I budget out more importantly time for me so I don't tap out and burn out? But then also yeah. I make sure that I'm giving quality time, quality attention to each of those areas that I have to, chosen to take on. You know, we we choose to get married and invest in our relationships. We choose to become parents. We choose to become business entrepreneurs. We become business owners because we have something that we that the Lord has given us or, you know, spirit, God, divine, whatever you choose for me, it's God. I choose, I, I genuinely believe that those of us who are business owners have a God-given ability and blessing to share with the world and so how do you do that how how can we break yeah. it down to where it's less overwhelming for them for those who are listening yeah I love this question and first I want to speak a little bit to this thing that I think probably your audience can really relate to and I know that I can relate to this feeling of um sometimes feeling a little bit of resentment or sometimes looking at people who are not in caregiving positions or I'll look at people that are not moms and say, it must be so much easier for them. Or I'll think back to when I was growing my business and I didn't have my baby. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had that time. Like, I wish I had that energy. Like it's so hard some days. And so I think if that, if that's coming up for you, that's completely normal. And we also get to shift that. And we get to say like, yes, my circumstances are different and they are harder. And that's okay. I can still be successful. I can still find a way to make this work. Um, and it's a lie that I have to like be on. I have to be on my laptop 24 seven, or it's a lie that you have to choose one or the other. Like I'm choosing for myself to live in the paradigm of, I get to be a present loving mom and I get to be a successful business owner. And I don't actually have to choose. It's just that the way to get there, it's going to look a little different and it's going to be hard some days, but like I'm finding my flow. And I think that's true for everybody. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's the big word, two words right there that you said, I choose. We get yeah. to choose. We have a choice. So there is no right or wrong way. Okay. There's no right or wrong way to be a parent because you are the one that knows as a parent, you know, your children better than anybody else on God's green earth. As you know, your partner 
better than anybody else because you're their partner. Um, you know your business better than anyone else. And if you're a caregiver, you know their illness better than anyone else because you're there 24 seven and you know the signs and symptoms and triggers and how to cope with that better than anyone else. But with that being said, you know, when you feel like Ashley said, when you feel that resentment coming in, just take a deep breath. Okay. You're doing the best you can with a plate, with the plate you've been given. And sometimes it is hard, but you, but like Ashley said, you get to shift it. And so going, kind of curtailing it to the caregiving side, it's like, I actually have gotten more time with my family because I've had to caregive for these loved ones, both of my grandmother, um, the last two years of my dad, he just passed away in July. And over the last four years with my husband, it's made our marriage stronger, I think, because we've really had to trust each other. He's had to really mm -hmm. learn to trust me that I know what I'm doing um, when I'm trying to take care of him. So it's a huge amount of vulnerability. And, and you can translate that easily too, guys, for the business side. When we're sharing our stories, regardless of how simple or technical we get, we're being vulnerable. We're putting stuff out there from our soul that we're hoping will change the lives of somebody else. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. So. yeah. And I think you asked about like some of the biggest things that have been helpful for me or that I could share with others. And I think one of the, the biggest is support, like letting in the support. And I know that this has been a journey for me as a mom, letting in support and not feeling guilty about it. So I have my daughter going to daycare a couple of days a week for a while. So I could get more done in my business and the guilt, the overwhelming guilt that I did not expect that I was going to feel. It was like, Oh my goodness. I cannot believe like I'm letting somebody else take care of her. Is she okay? Like, this is so bad. Like I can, I technically can take care of her, but I also crave that space to be able to really like focus on my business. And I think as moms or as caregivers, like let go of the guilt. I think you might feel like, well, I'm the one person that they need. And while you are an important person in their life, where can you lean on a little bit more support so that you can have space and time for yourself? And, and that's been an exploration for me. Like, what do I want the childcare to look like? And I realized I actually didn't want her in daycare. And so I hired a nanny. And so I have a nanny in my living room right now and I'm letting that support in. So let that support right. in, let go of the guilt. I love that. And this is where it can get really cool in the online space is mm -hmm. there's tons of people out there in their own online space. There's obviously Ashley and I have different coaching businesses and different people we're talking with and we teach in a different way, which makes us beautiful, unique human beings and business owners. But that's the cool thing is like, you can get multiple support from multiple people. I have, I've had like three or four coaches in my lifetime. I'd say that my hardcore coaches, Ashley's one, shout out to Faith Mariah, Coral and Hazelwood, Rebecca Lahr, who's my productivity coach. I mean, I've had, you know, my Christian life coach, Aaron. I mean, I've had multiples because there's different aspects that I've needed help, you know, um, Ashley is definitely the one and Corlin, I, I definitely are the ones for social media and, and content and, um, storytelling and faith has been more along the line of like, um, business strategy and just launching. So that's okay. We need, I need, you need different things to, um, succeed because there's a lot of skills you have to learn as a business owner, but the same is true as being a mom and a caregiver. There's a lot of skills you have to learn. You have to learn how you um, are able to find rest and self-care time and you time and prioritize yeah. that with the season of motherhood you had, you have. For me, it's translating it to the business. Ashley has a nanny right now watching her child. My daughter's in school right now. So this is my time to um, focus on my business and my work. And it's only a couple hours, but and I'm getting done what I can get done. And I'm also giving myself grace because I'm grieving still the loss of my father. So there's a lot going on in both of our lives in different seasons, but we're accepting the help. We're accepting the help um, within the season that you're in. So maybe for you, um, for those who are listening, maybe you might need something that's in person. So what's something that you could do locally within your church, your community, support group, you know, what's some, or maybe even just um, outsourcing groceries or help with house cleaning, you know, maybe it's not a nanny you need, like, like what Ashley needs, but something we utilized the last two years of my dad's life was house cleaning, because I just had so much going on with his health, and then dealing with my daughter, and then my husband wasn't 
stable, as stable when we first moved in as he is now. So, but now we flipped it. We're taking back over the the house cleaning because and to get save some money because he's healthier and and we have the time. So, it doesn't with when you're making these kind of decisions for receiving help. I want you to know that there's flexibility in in that too. Just because you say yes to this type of help in this type of season, be it as a business owner, a mother, or a caregiver, it can change. It's okay to change. You remember those words. I choose. So you can choose right now to maybe have a little bit more like Ashley's choosing right now. She has a smaller child. She needs more help. She has a child that needs a lot more attention and, you know, maybe a little transition later on. Like I am when she had when our child's four or five and they start school, she'll get some off. She'll get some kid free, which I guarantee you, Ashley will be nice. Don't feel guilty is nice <laughs> to have those kid free office hours then too. So, and same thing with your loved one's health. Maybe they'll improve. Maybe um, they won't. Maybe you might need to draw on some extra resources of home health or hospice, um, or even just maybe family or friends doing like what um, Ashley's father is doing right now and what I've done in the past with other family members, like my grandmother, of actually living with them and being the primary caregiver to offset the impact on the rest of the family. But everyone's different and there's no right or wrong way. So never take anything that we say as, oh, it has to be this way. Okay. Yeah. So take, so stick with the remember the words I choose but also for, don't be confined in the words I have to yeah. okay so there's there's absolutely. the fine line there's the fine line so yeah, yeah absolutely my dad just told me I was talking to my dad and he's like I just got this membership at the health club and I've been going and I've been swimming and I'm like yes like that is so important I'm so happy for him that he's taking that time and I think everybody here just like you could do a little audit, like, where do I need support? And you can think about your physical health. Are there mm -hmm. anything that you need? Like, do you need to be taking care of your body in a different way? Maybe that means making smoothies in the morning or getting a gym membership. I just got a gym membership too. And the other night after my daughter went to sleep, I went and I just sat in the sauna. I was like, oh, this is so nice. Like, where can you give yourself that for your physical health, your spiritual or your mental health? Um, I love what you mentioned about community. I'm going to uh, like a women in business spiritual kind of retreat uh, next month. And I'm so excited. And I had a lot of guilt um, come up for that when I first invested in it. And I think this, this is so common where you're like, oh, I want the gym membership or I should start, you know, investing in a mentor. I should join that retreat. But then there's the guilt of, well, you know, my people might need me or it, should I really spend money on this when maybe I should save the money for them or for something more important you are important. Your business cannot grow if you're not filling up your own cup and feeling well-resourced because then you can't pour into your business in the way that you need to. And you also can't take care of your loved ones in the, in the way that you need to. So where like do an audit of your life, be really radically honest with yourself. Notice when the guilt comes up and it probably will, and that's okay, but don't let it stop you from just saying yes to the things that you know are going to give you the time and energy back so that you can, you know, live the life that you want to live. Absolutely. And, and with that in mind, I love how you said that about, you know, say yes to the things that you need right now. And just, and if, and if it's hard to say yes to some things, you know, you need to say yes to some things and you can only say yes to a few things. That's okay. The seasons change. I know for me, I'm enjoying my business more now with being able to try to actually take it easy. It's kind of two things. It's like realizing I jumped my feet foot back in after a six weeks leave of absence and then raising, oh gosh, I'm still grieving and I need to pace myself, but it feels good to be back. Um, and I'm able to give it the time and just take a step back and kind of reset about where I'm going to go with this. Um, cause the momentum kind of shifted a little bit after I took my leave of absence and that's fine. And, but I also have the benefit though, of I'm a lot more clear headed. I've been, but for me, I've invested in Plexus. I've been, I'm, I'm in my first month, of, first month of Plexus and I have more energy. Um, I've limited caffeine. I'm drinking more water. I'm trying to get some movement in. You know, what, you know, what, like Ashley said, there's different things. So for me, the things that I've invested in the most are just um, enjoying having some kid free time to play around with some things with my business and just and making some choices with that. And then Plexus to work on my health, to get my IBS symptoms under control. 
And then also for the grief, I just recently joined a grief class at my church and I'm only in like week two or three and it's going to go for a whole quarter. And then I'm going to do something else in January. So that's okay. So whatever you need for this season, and maybe that might be helpful. Um, in the business world, we talk about quarters. So every three months. So maybe for the season you're in, maybe just look at that. What do I, what could I, what, what's one area I could focus on for the next 90 days to just really give. And then if I get that under control, I feel like I'm in a good spot with that. Maybe you can add in something else and that way it won't be so overwhelming for one. And it'll allow you to be focused on actually accomplishing that one goal of support, getting support. Maybe it's joining a program. Maybe it's joining a class. Maybe it's like, Actually, threw out drinking more smoothies. Maybe it's working on going to bed 15 minutes earlier every night to get more sleep. Maybe it's taking a step back from your business if you need to, if it's too much, if you're at sensory overload and there is no way, shape, or form that you can do that. So there's no right or wrong way. Um, we just want you taking, we just want you to do something. <laughs> we, as your coaches, we just want you to do something at this point so you don't end up in the ultimate bad place of burnout because it and physical and Ashley touched on this because you know I've talked about it before physical mental emotional and spiritual um health are important and I'm not talking with the physical only in just enough sleep enough nutrition enough movement there's other aspects of 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 physical health you know that we that you look at you know because your mind your body your mind and your soul coincide with that so if you're dealing with extra anxiety and you're not dealing with it or extra trauma, that's going to manifest in physical symptoms. Sometimes people have, um, like my husband, he has two underlying diagnoses. He has his epilepsy, but then we figured out he also has um, stress. The way he, his body manifests stress is non-epileptic seizures. And so they're stress-related seizures. And so, you know, we need to be mindful about what, what sets our bodies off how we react, and then what we can do to limit those types of situations from becoming a consistent um, problem, you know, a consistent occurrence, because that just lose, that just steals our joy, that just stops us in our tracks from being able to serve our, our clients and our customers if we're a business owner, but as a caregiver and a spouse or a partner and a mom, it really um, doesn't help us being able to take care of, the, of our loved ones, our most important circle, which is our family which is our loved ones. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I would lo love to speak to um, a little piece that I think your audience would find really helpful, which is just this reminder of as coaches, healers, leaders, um, business owners, it is always our job to lead ourselves first. I'm so big on embodiment. I'm always like telling my clients like, okay, what would you tell a client to do in this situation? Like, what are you not doing that you would tell somebody else to do? How can you lead yourself first and be the example, be the role model? Um, because ultimately that's going to attract your soulmate clients and customers to you when they see that you are the type of person that walks your own talk. And so if you're selling offers on the internet and you're asking other people to invest in themselves, but then you're not investing in yourself, whether that be business investments or just life support, you know, for your health and your body, then you're not a match to attract people into your offers. So where are you not doing the things that you're asking your audience to do? And how can you just step it up a little and, and lead yourself more and be that role model? I love that. And it's so funny that you actually said that because Coraline just, I just actually watched a module <laughs> yesterday and Coraline was actually teaching about that. So shout out to Coraline. See her, Coraline. I'm getting it. Hello. I'm getting it. <laughs> um, I love it. So yeah, no, it's so important, right? That we walk the walk and talk the talk. And I want to walk the walk and talk the talk. And I think that the piece of that though, too, is being grateful for what you do have. Don't be looking at all the bells and whistles of like people who are making 10K. They say that they can make 10K overnight. Ashley and I know it takes a lot of work to get there. Okay. It doesn't happen overnight. And if people are, you probably have a team helping them. And, you know, I don't know. So that's a whole nother rabbit hole we will not get into. That's very hard and close to uh, Ashley and I. We, oh, it just gets, it makes my skin boil every time. But yeah, no, it takes work. And, um, you know, you have to walk the walk and talk your talk. And with, and with that too, just give yourself grace that it's a journey. Okay. You know, the, the program I've invested in that I've been in for, gosh, almost 
three, three years, three years now. Yeah. Um, it's actually how I met Ashley, actually. Um, she was a co-coach in there. Um, yeah, we have, I have people, there's people in there that, are, that have, ju they're just starting. They just like literally said, okay, I want to be a business owner. And then there's people like me that have been there three, five, eight years, and they're not hitting the revenue that they want yet. And they're still figuring out because I know for me, I'm realizing I got to give myself grace. I've taken a lot of hits over the last couple of years, you know, the pandemic, my husband being sick, um, my uh, mother passing away, then my dad passed away and we moved in to take care of him. And I had a lot heavier caregiving load for a couple the last two years. So it's really making sense. I think now that I'm really processing and now I'm grieving, it's like, okay, it's okay for me to pull back. <laughs> I can't keep going 60 when I probably need to be in a 35 mile zone for a while. And that's okay. And that doesn't mean that's not going to change. Um, I do think it's very important too, that again, like we've talked about just keeping your cup full because you're not going to be able to serve anybody. And I want you also thinking about um, it's okay to dream. It's okay to dream. You know, why, like Ashley touched on, you know, like, um, you know, what would you be telling a client? You know, what are your goals? What are your goals? What are your goals as a mom? What are your goals as a caregiver? What, what are your goals as a business owner? You know, where do you want to be? Who do you want to help? What do, what do you want to do with this business? You know, um, a, a business is something where you get, where you move that bottom line and you generate ROI. So return of investment. So how are you doing that? You know, is because it, if it, if because if it, if you don't have the answer to those questions, it's just going to be a hobby. And I'm not saying hobbies are bad, but you can. But money is an asset that allows us to serve more people and help mm -hmm. more people. So, and it does bring in more resources too. Like if we have the ability to um, hand off some tasks to, because I know for me, the you know I like to, content is kind of a struggle bus for me. I definitely want some help maybe with that down the road or even the podcast, but I love recording the podcast and I love doing the coaching. You know, that's my heart and soul. I love intentional conversations like this. That's where I envision myself wanting to do more of my time and not all the back end stuff eventually, but I'm not there yet. And the only way I can get there is if I actually go through the motions of learning all the skills I need to learn of, and how I want it to be done. So I know what expectations I have in terms of my team when I do hire a team one day when I get there so it's all seasons it's all learning there's no right or wrong way you're not a failure if you try something this is the other piece of the puzzle too you're not a failure if you try something and it flops yeah. so don't let the guilt get you because I know as moms that's the big thing that we deal with a lot and then it only gets older I'm sorry Ashley as they get older because there's more things that we have to teach them so I'm just warning you okay it it there's it will still come up again okay it's not one and done um but with that being said is that it's a journey and this is your unique journey both as a caregiver with learning how to manage your loved one's illness both as a business owner with trying to meet the needs of your clients and finding your voice in a cloud in a sea of voices you have a unique voice that deserves to be heard and if you need extra support there's people here that can help you. You know, Ashley and I are just two pieces, two people in a cloud of business entrepreneur coaches that are passionate about helping you find your passion. Okay. Right. And maybe it's not, yeah. And maybe it's not your passion that you need help with, but maybe it is a form of self-care. Like my Christian life coach, I needed help with some spiritual support for a while because it was just too much with everything I had going on. Yeah. Yeah. My best advice for that, I love what you're saying. And for anybody that's like, okay, but how do I like take that next step? Find somebody that has a business that you aspire to. Not that you're going to, you know, create a carbon copy of their business because we want your business to be unique to you, but find somebody who's operating in a way that you really admire. Maybe you really love how simple their business is, or maybe you really admire their content or how they show up with confidence, or you really love how they run a membership, or maybe they focus on one-on-one -on -one and there's something that you really admire about them as a person and as a business owner, learn from them. Like they're there are like, it's not a secret how people grow really successful businesses. Like you can learn. Um, so don't, don't get swept up into like, oh, they make so much money. And that's why I should learn from them. So many people make money in so many different ways. I've made that mistake of investing because, oh, they make so much money. They'll teach me how to, 
but instead find somebody that's running a business and being the kind of person, being the kind of leader that you aspire to be, get in their space, even if it just means consuming their podcast or consuming their free content um, or invest in the higher level mentorship if you can. And that will be the fastest way for you to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Yeah. It's not, and it's not about, I know for me, I'm glad you said that it's for me. It certainly was not the case with the coaches I've had. It's not because they make X amount of money or anything Um, with faith. I'm just going to shoot it straight. You know, I remember the days when she would just show up in her um, workout clothes and do a live because she was so passionate about showing up and sharing what was on her heart and what she was just not willing to shut up about, to be brutally honest. And I love that about her. She And she's like, wasn't in business attire, wasn't in makeup, you know? And like, I know that's definitely my style. I show up in my, you know, mom leggings or jeans, my hoodie and a t-shirt, my messy bun. That's me. What you see is what you get. Sorry, no makeup here. Um, and then Ashley, very much the same. She's my, we're close in age, was something that drew me to you, I remember. And just, you know, passion about just sharing you those are the two words that just really hit me when I started reading your content and learning from you in the mastermind it was just learning you know what just share your story it doesn't have to be perfect with some magical solution just share your life and just share what you've been through and like you know something I'm really taking away now from even just being here getting coached by you a little bit to some degree is just um you know share and talk what you would what you would tell a client to do you know if you wouldn't if I wouldn't if I wouldn't tell a client to do it then I shouldn't be doing that and if I'm doing x y and z because I know it will benefit me I need to tell my clients to do the same thing so yeah yeah so love you (laughs) (laughs) I love you and and I I think um it's it's I really want people to also take away this idea that you your people want to hear from you. They want to know your story. They want to know the struggles that you've been through. They want to know um, the wins that you've had. They want to learn from you and they want to be able to see themselves in you. And so I teach a lot of storytelling because I'm a marketing coach. And when it comes to sharing your story, it's not just sharing your story for the sake of sharing your story, but it's really sharing your story for the sake of connection, for the sake of showing people what's possible and being that example, being that role model, being the person that's willing to go first and, you know, blaze your own trail so other people can follow. Absolutely. I love that. Well, anyway, I have loved this conversation. Where can we get more Ashley Rachel? (laughs) <laughs> me too I love this and Instagram is really the best place that's where I hang out the most so I'm at Ashley Rachel coaching I'm on my Instagram stories all the time and I loved what you said about like you know mom bun and the you know the messy outfit or whatever because that's me I show up on my Instagram stories all the time just like hanging out with my daughter giving marketing and content tips so that's the best place um, to find me and you can also find my free course in my bio on attracting online fit clients and I also have an upcoming storytelling program that will be launching. Um, it should be open by the time this airs. Oh, I'm so excited. I am personally, y'all, um, you know, Ashley's my, like I said, Ashley's one of my coaches. So your girl's on the wait list for that one. So join me on the wait list for that one. Cause that one's going to be really good. So, um, and it's going to be amazing. So Ashley, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy mom and business life to come have this intentional conversation with me. I'm really excited that you have um, just been as successful as you have. You've just plotted your path. You've stuck to your beliefs, your goals. And it's just so I, I can speak as one of your students that's been very inspirational to me. And I just have a lot of respect for you. And it's definitely motivate. It's definitely motivating me in my own journey to not give up and to keep going in whatever way, shape or form it works. It's realistic. I like that word now too. realistic in the season that I'm in. So yeah. Well, thank you, Melissa. I just absolutely adore you and your positive energy. And you're, I, as I said before, you're the best hype woman. So all of, you, <laughs> all of your listeners are so, so lucky to have you in their corner as well. Oh, thank you. All right, guys. Well, that concludes this episode of the Caregiving and Entrepreneurship Reimagined podcast. Definitely like, follow and subscribe me um, on all major platforms. And then also, if you are struggling in your caregiving journey, and you and you are in a season where you want some more help, some more coaching, um, some more guidance, definitely get on the wait list. The link will be in the description where, wherever you're watching this below um, for my new program, Caregiving and Entrepreneurship Reimagined, dropping on October 11th for a limited time. So get on the wait list so you will be notified 
when doors are open. Thanks again for watching. And remember that you're allowed to give yourself grace on those hard days. You are doing the best you can in a very um, hard season, whatever that looks like for you, and that there's no right or wrong way. You're doing what you need to do as a mom or a partner or a caregiver or a business owner like we talked about today with what you have on your plate. So give yourself some grace and I will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.